This is intentioned to be a definitive guide to implants in Planetside 2 until the change. We're going to have six categories. These are Zarg surfing, vehicles, situational, point holding, relatively useless and totally useless. So let's dive right in with the Zarg surfing. Keep in mind there's going to be a few implants not here that arguably should be like combat sergeant, scavenger. And that's because I put them in the situational category because I think it makes a bit more sense. Generally speaking, Zarg surfing is broadly defined as sitting in a Zarg and farming as many kills as possible. Generally speaking, assimilates are really great because it keeps your uptime high. Survivalist for the same reason is nice, especially if you're going to be using flak instead of advanced shield capacitor. Some people do like to use battle hardened, although it has fallen out of the meta quite a bit relative to where it was a few years ago. And then last but not least is athlete because it helps you abuse the movement meta. Right, and next, let's go over vehicles. Pretty much all of these implants are either S tier or A tier, just depending on the situation you're in. So so for example, if you're in an ESF, you might use counterintelligence and ammo printer. If you're not using safe four because you don't want to get your KD pushed down. Some people in aircraft also like to use target focus. But if you're in like a liberator or a main battle tank or even a Sunderer and you don't want to spend as much time waiting for a gunner, you might be using a logistics specialist implant. And obviously in a land vehicle as well, things like sweeper HUD can make sense. Of course, ammo printer always is a good idea as well. Ransack, I have been told, is also something that the tank mains like to use as well. Okay, so let's go over some more great implants which could be considered situational. Avoidance is a great implant if you don't want to be looking at the ground constantly for mines and also you don't want to have to be worrying about engineer turrets shooting at you. Avoidance is a really good solo player class if you're going to be playing like as an SMG infiltrator or your solo capping bases or your tower farming. But of course avoidance is absolutely trash to use outside of those situations. Berserk is really good if you think a fight's going to last for like five minutes and you want to pull a max. You don't want to be pulling a max if it's only going to be say one minute left on the point hold and you're trying to break the point hold. You may as well just throw in four flashes in like seven second intervals if you want to break a point hold instead of just pulling a max. Concussions can work too but I'm just saying Berserk is really great again if the fight's going to last well. Carapace is situationally good in two specific situations. It's good in point holding to a degree because you get revived on full HP from a med tool but you don't from a resonate but yeah it can be pretty decent especially in combination with safeguard or combat sergeant. Deep operative is pretty decent on a bolt sniper because I believe it lets you decloak slightly faster. If they have changed that at some point just put it in the comments and I'll take that part out. Infovision in my opinion is extremely underrated. The reason you don't see people use it more often is because it's aids to look at especially on a live stream or a video. Separately as well some people dislike infovision because it gives them eye strain. There isn't anything that gives me eye strain ever other than Infovision specifically in Planet Side 2. I've put Salvage in Situational because there isn't many other max implants to use which makes salvage in combination with safeguard or something similar like a relatively safe choice especially during max alerts. During max alerts if that ever happens again salvage with an anti-vehicle gun on your max to kill other maxes is just a really good combination. I've also added sensor shield to this category I don't think it really fits in anywhere else. Much like avoidance it's an extremely good implant if you're going to be in situations where you're playing solo. The second that you're around allies to the point where enemies are expecting you to be there, sensor shield loses all of its validity and shouldn't be used. You technically can use it in large fights but you just have to not be near any allies within at least like 50 meters. Now I've also added symbiote to the situational list which might confuse some people because many people consider symbiote trash relative to how strong it used to be back when it was bugged a year ago but arguably it isn't a terrible implant especially if you're in for example a tunnel farm and your shield's going down quite regularly you know arguably you could even use it with something like engineer an AoE shield on your medic in combination with advanced shield capacitor or survivalist remember they don't stack and yes yeah, symbiote arguably isn't awful and again specifically that's in stalemates where you're kind of tunnel farming or something you know point holding can still make sense so let's go over the implants that generally speaking people agree are pretty decent I've tried to avoid putting implants into more than one category in this video as you may have noticed but I absolutely have to make an exception for assimilate which is a really good point holding implant it's kind of the bread and butter
matter of that kind of playstyle in combination with something like Safeguard. However, that has been contested recently with such things as Scavenger being added in last year, which is really great. Now, there is of course Jockey in combination with Robots Technician, which is really nice for point holds as well. It's something we used to, to be honest, rely on quite a bit. We'd usually have three or four people using turrets just because people really liked using them, especially because their outfit is generally pretty casual. I am also quickly going to mention Carapace again in combination with Combat Sergeant or Safeguard can be really good for point holding too, on Medic especially. Now there are some arguably kind of like B tier implants for point holding which arguably can be pretty good but very situational. Things like Electral Tech can be good if you've kind of got like a really crazy max point hold. And likewise if you're going against very try hard players Ocular Shield can be good because it negates the effects of concussions which when playing against tryhards they'll oftentimes use, likewise with Flash. Okay, and that swiftly adds us into the next category, which is relatively useless implants. These are implants which are okay to use, but there's always a better option. So relative to the other options, people generally wouldn't choose to use these implants, purely because there's other things that just do their job way better. A great example to me is Aerial Combatant. This is something that people should use a lot more, but generally speaking, you see air mains generally use Safe Fall, Ammo Printer, Counterintelligence, Target for Focus. and so for that reason Aerial Combatant isn't really considered that good. Bionics, in my opinion, has a lot of potential on, for example, Engineer, which passively gets an additional one second of recharge on shields, and you can combine that with something like Advanced Shield Capacitor or Survivalist. The only issue to me is that isn't worth it for losing 450 extra health, which you could have as a heavy assault player. And likewise, Bionics on a Medic with the Shield field, in my opinion, just isn't that good right now. Cat-like I've also put in relatively useless because it is something I used to abuse rather heavily because you could essentially dodge shots. It was absolutely dumb. But now that that's been fixed, Cat-like essentially just makes you easier to kill because you essentially like like jump up and whilst you're jumping up it's a linear movement that's rather slow which is exactly what you don't want in an infantry combat situation so for that reason cat like generally speaking isn't good it can be nice to climb up cliffs or walls so i'm gonna not say it's a terrible implant but it's certainly not amazing now cold heart does have one use and that's confusing people in the warp gate or in the sanctuary it essentially makes this really weird noise and has a weird visual effect and so people using cold heart oftentimes will confuse people which I guess is like kind of useful in a way so I'm not going to put it in totally useless. <laughs> On a more serious note here we do have Kovar drop but in this point you may as well just be using safe fall and you can't use both safe fall and Kovar drop because essentially there's way too many other implants that you'd want to use as someone in an aircraft. Critical chain I do see occasionally used by salty vets. There's so many other good implants that I don't really think it's good to use but you know it's not awful so I'm gonna leave him. Disengage is only this high up because there's so few max implants to use. There's things like Infovision, Safeguard, Salvage and maybe Sweeper HUD. That's pretty much it for max and so if you don't have all of those options available to you Disengage isn't terrible. Firewall isn't a terrible implant to use for your turret that you have it does last for six minutes so fair enough i guess next i'm going to mention here is fortify fortify isn't terrible if you want to be using like bandolier medic it's like a really ghetto implant that doesn't really have much use but you know you can, i guess use it if you really want to gunslinger is kind of like a cool implant that you can get when you have asp and you can have like a pistol primary and secondary in that, that specific situation maybe with critical chain or something you know it could be useful to use for fun, let's try to pronounce this implant, Phycolatory. Anyway, it doesn't really matter how I pronounce it because I'll never pronounce it again. It's a totally useless implant, generally speaking. You know, maybe if you die three times in the max, it's useful, but you don't want to be dying three times in the max to begin with. And even if you do get to three revives and you're on your fourth, you would assume if someone's revived you for the first three times, most likely for the fourth time, they're going to have a revive you as well. I guess situationally it isn't terrible, but really it's not amazing. I've also added regeneration... Now perhaps the most controversial take in this entire list will be my opinion about regeneration. A lot of light assault players like to use regeneration because then they don't have to sacrifice having C4. While that's true, I'd much rather have something like Censure Shield and Avoidance if I'm a light assault intending to place C4, especially because once I've placed my C4, I'm likely to die. Basically, if you're using C4, you shouldn't expect to be around for a super long amount of time. And so using regeneration just doesn't synergize well with C4 from that situation, in my opinion. You, know, you should just kind of YOLO in there and use your C4 
or if you can have it equipped. There's then a class of totally useless implants which in my opinion have no use ever. There's some that I wish I didn't have to put in this tier list but just simply have to be in here because they're totally out of the meta. For example knives have been nerfed so much right now that I don't think they're worth using. I was really excited to get into the idea of using knives and just as I started well nerfed knives and so I basically just can't use them. And that's why Nightmare and Vampire in this tier list. We then also have Mobility Mesh and Nano Mesh Specialist which are absolutely garbage relative to using Adrenaline Shield or Nano Mesh Generator. Resist is garbage because you end up with pretty much the same effect of HP as just having Adrenaline Shield or Nano Mesh Generator, both of which are so much better for a myriad of reasons. Because this game is client side, some of the resist that you activate won't actually be activated on the other opposition screen. And so for that reason, right off the bat it's kind of trash. And that's even assuming that you do try to activate it in time. If someone shoots you in the back, you, there's no chance. There's also a few other reasons, but I won't get into it too much, but I will add in a quick addendum that technically resist isn't terrible if you're using it with a tethered medic or two tethered medics. Maybe you got carapace on, but at that point, you, you know, you could have two medics actually playing the game instead of healing you. So I don't know. Also, technically resist isn't awful in combination with something like symbiote and survivalist in a tunnel farm specifically because it does help you be able to kind of stay in the front lines a bit longer before having to retreat. There's also things like minor cloak here. Minor cloak sounds good on paper until you realize you can't shoot whilst you're uncloaking. And so say even if you're in an ideal situation where you've got minor cloak on, you're solo capping a base, you're a heavy assault with a shotgun, even then I've tried it, it's not amazing. The recloak time is quite long and the time that it takes to uncloak once you've started moving or tried starting to shoot is just way too long. There's also things like counter shade and assassin which are just really really useless especially relative to the other implants on this list. They just don't offer enough utility relative to other implants to a massive degree where they can't even be considered relatively useless. They're just totally useless really. Same can be said for things like experimental stims, failsafe, firestorm, heavyweight, overdrive, paratrooper, sidewinder and springstep. Again just aren't that amazing relative to the other options that you have available to you. The last one I quickly want to touch on is mending field which again on paper sounds amazing only the heal is so slow like like genuinely extremely slow and then on top of that it only heals you to 300 HP which is absurdly not good. Now as far as I can tell this is pretty much exactly correct. I would be interested in hearing if there's any nuance which I missed, anything that you would have added in if you made this video, or anything that in your opinion I got just totally incorrect. Talking about every single implant in Planetside 2 in 13 minutes to me is a massive achievement. Again, especially if I got all the nuance correct, which I really am interested to hear. It's been a pleasure. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because it does help the channel so much to subscribe. Like the video. I'm out. GG. Bye bye.